I just want them to know that my legacy has been one of helping people. If there's nothing else, I do want them to know that I, I'm a tither and I'm a giver. At 85, Shirley Caesar, gospel legend and former member of the caravans, has finally addressed the rumors that have been haunting her for years. What secrets have she kept hidden all year? Does what she revealed match our speculations? Stay tuned for the answers. But before we explore Shirley's revelation, we need to peek into her early years and how she got her start in the gospel music world. Shirley Caesar, an American gospel music icon whose career spanned more than seven decades. Known as the Queen of Gospel Music, Shirley Caesar was born in Durham, North Carolina on October 13, 1938, into a family of 13 siblings. Her father, James Caesar, was also a gospel singer, but he died when she was 10, leaving the family in difficult circumstances. However, Shirley always remembered his musical influence. During her early years, she sang in church and quickly discovered her passion for music. It was traditional gospel music that became the foundation for her later musical career. From an early age, she demonstrated outstanding singing talent and determination, using her voice to bring a message of love and hope. At the age of 12, Shirley began performing gospel music professionally, and soon after, she joined the Caravans, a popular gospel group at the time. Her difficult childhood experiences helped build a strong determination and faith that shaped Shirley Caesar's musical style and life throughout her later years. Johnson had a television show in Portsmouth, Virginia, which probably gave young Shirley valuable experience performing for both live audiences and on air. In 1951, at the age of 13, Shirley reached a major milestone in her career. She recorded her first song, titled I'd Rather Have Jesus. Shirley Caesar began her singing career at an early age and immediately demonstrated a unique talent for gospel music. Shirley's father had inspired her musically from a young age, and her years growing up in a musical and religious household laid the foundation for her career. A significant part of her early career came from her experience performing on Johnson's television show in Portsmouth, Virginia. Through this show, young Shirley Caesar had the opportunity to learn about stage acting and how to convey her message to a live audience and on screen. In 1951, at the age of 13, Shirley achieved a major turning point when she recorded her first song, I'd Rather Have Jesus. This is a traditional gospel song celebrating faith and choosing a life of faith toward God. With this song, Shirley not only marked the first milestone in her career, but also demonstrated the profound gospel style that she would continue to develop. This song quickly attracted the attention of the community and gospel music lovers, helping her name to become prominent and loved, not only locally, but also nationally. Ed Shirley Caesar spent a lot of time touring through the States in the Carolinas, thereby developing her performance skills and building a loyal fan base. These years of touring were the time when she honed her performance skills and perfected her powerful voice. Live performances helped Caesar better understand how to connect with audiences and convey religious messages deeply and passionately. However, the journey has not always been smooth. What has she had to go through? Let's follow her journey to fame. Caesar faced financial hardships and many personal challenges as he tried to make a name for himself. Shirley Caesar, who grew up in Durham, North Carolina, during the 1940s and 1950s, faced racism and social inequality under Jim Crow laws. Shirley Caesar recalled traumatic incidents where she was refused service at restaurants and eateries because of the color of her skin. When she went to public places, some restaurants would close on her. A blatant rejection. One particular incident Shirley recalled was a day when a woman came to school to hand out cookies to the students. The white children were given fresh, flavorful cookies, while Shirley and the other black students were given stale, inferior cookies. For Shirley, such inequalities in small ways created a sense of alienation, but also strengthened her determination to overcome adversity. Shirley's mother, Hannah Caesar, played a large role in shaping her resilience and determination. Hannah Caesar was a single mother with deep religious beliefs, and she taught Shirley to live with compassion and not succumb to injustice. After graduating from high school, Shirley Caesar decided to pursue higher education at North Carolina Central College, where she enrolled in business education. Although she initially intended to pursue a career in this field, Shirley soon realized that her life seemed destined for another calling. 
a spiritual journey. During one class, while concentrating on a typing test, she suddenly heard a voice calling her name. Confused, Shirley turned to her classmate next to her to ask if she had said anything, but her classmate was surprised because she had not heard anything. When she returned home, Shirley heard the voice again, but this time the message was clearer. She felt a call from the divine. I have called you from the womb, and I have anointed your lips to preach the gospel. For Shirley, this experience was a moment of profound spiritual awakening, and she believes it was a sign that she was leading her to spread the gospel through music. From there, Shirley began a career dedicated to gospel music, bringing the message of faith to audiences everywhere. In 1958, at the age of 19, Shirley Caesar made a decision that would have a huge impact on her career, joining the Caravans, a famous band in the American gospel music scene. Shirley, with her strong passion and outstanding talent, proactively sought out Albertina Walker, the leading singer and founder of the Caravans, to ask to join. Albertina recognized and was deeply impressed by Shirley's powerful, soulful voice and quickly agreed to invite Shirley to join the band. This was an important turning point, prompting Shirley to temporarily stop studying to focus entirely on her music career. Her time with the caravans helped Shirley develop her skills and stage presence through performances in front of large audiences. Here, she had the opportunity to work with famous gospel singers such as Dorothy Norwood and James Cleveland. However, touring life with a famous gospel band also posed new challenges for the young singer. Are these challenges physical, mental or stressful? Stay tuned. Shirley Caesar's first night as a member of the caravans was a real challenge, an experience she calls baptism by fire. Alone in Washington, D.C., Shirley stayed at the Casbah Hotel, located on U Street, an area known for its rich African-American history and culture. It was her first time staying in a hotel an experience that was both foreign and left her feeling lonely and vulnerable. At the Casbah, amid complex emotions, Shirley was tested not only on her singing ability, but also on her resilience and determination to pursue a music career. One notable incident occurred while she was staying at a hotel during her tour. A male gospel singer, who was staying at the same hotel for a performance, made an inappropriate move and tried to molest her. Despite only being in her twenties, Shirley remained calm and firmly refused to do so, demonstrating maturity and determination not to put herself in a dangerous situation. This was part of her journey to learn the importance of standing her ground and protecting herself in the complex and sometimes treacherous environments of the entertainment industry. As Shirley Caesar began to settle into her role with the caravans, her talent was quickly recognized. She had the opportunity to perform with leading gospel artists such as Albertina Walker, Cassietta George, Dolores Washington, Josephine Howard, Eddie Williams, and James Herndon. During her time with the caravans, Shirley Caesar recorded several hit songs that left a lasting impression on listeners. One of her most notable songs with the group was Sweeping Through the City, a powerful song that expressed hope and faith in the future. The second song, No Coward Soldier, was also a favorite and conveyed a message of courage and perseverance. Both songs were not only commercial successes, but also became gospel classics. Many consider her to be one of the greatest voices in the genre. However, as is often the case in the music industry, tensions began to develop between the members of caravans in the early 1960s. Where did the tensions come from? Were they able to resolve them? Read on. In 1961, Shirley Caesar experienced a turning point in her life and career. Despite her promising start in the caravans and her success, she felt a strong call from God to pursue a missionary career, which she felt was a divine calling. This was not an easy decision. Shirley struggled with the thought of giving up her beloved singing career to pursue a deeper calling in her heart. She has said that she did not want to continue to disappoint others and felt that God had called her to a ministry that, according to her, was much more dynamic than just singing. Shirley Caesar went on to become a role model in the gospel community, standing out not only as a singer, but also as an influential missionary. Her missionary activities often carried a message of love and hope, which she has always aimed to convey throughout her career. After her time in the caravans, Shirley's career took an exciting new turn. How would she embark on her new journey as a solo artist? Was it difficult? Let's follow her journey. After eight years with the caravans, 
Shirley Caesar decided to step out and start her own solo career. This move was reinforced by a golden opportunity. Hob Records offered her a solo recording contract. This was an important step, opening a new chapter in her artistic life. Shirley's debut album with Hob Records, I'll Go, marked the beginning of a promising independent career. The album was a huge success and marked an important milestone in her musical career. Upon its release, the album received a warm reception from the public and critics. The album I'll Go not only showcased Shirley's powerful vocals, but also brought Shirley outstanding hits, such as Oh Peter Don't Be Afraid, which became gospel classics. Shirley Caesar has won many prestigious awards in the music industry for her efforts, including the Grammy Award for Gospel Artist. She has also been inducted into the Gospel Music Hall of Fame, cementing her place in the hearts of her fans and the history of gospel music. With the success of this album, Shirley continued to develop her career, releasing many other hits that helped her mark the music map. She has not only become one of the prominent artists in the gospel music genre, but is also widely recognized in the music community. The song Don't Drive Your Mama Away was another one of Shirley's most successful songs, as it struck a chord with a large number of listeners and further solidified her position in the world of gospel music. A significant turning point in Shirley's professional life occurred in the year 1971. As a result of her rendition of Put Your Hand in the Hand of the Man, she was officially awarded her first Grammy Award. The attention that Shirley received from the music business was a clear indication that her skill and the effort that she had put in were paying off. Additionally, it served as a confirmation of her choice to pursue a career as a solo artist. The song No Charge was Shirley's first gold record, which she achieved in 1975, just a few years after the song was released. Despite these achievements, Shirley believed that she could still make her music accessible to a greater number of people. It dawned on her that the use of Hob Records could be restricting the number of people who saw her work. Shirley made the courageous choice to not extend her contract with the label when it was time for her to renew it in the same year. It was time for her to make a shift, one that would perhaps allow her music to be heard by a far larger audience. Shirley decided in 1977 that would later be deemed controversial among the gospel world at the time. It was a secular label called Roadshow Records that she signed with. Initially, she released her album with Roadshow under the title First Lady. It was not Shirley who came up with the title. In light of the fact that Shirley was the first woman to record for the company, the producer decided to go with it. They had no idea that Shirley would continue to be known by this term throughout the entirety of her professional career. Shirley's CD, First Lady, was a bit of a change from her previous work. The music itself was considered by many members of the gospel community to be too worldly, despite the fact that the lyrics continued to have a solid foundation in gospel. Consequently, this resulted in some resistance, as a number of gospel DJs refused to play tunes from the album on their respective radio stations. Faded Rose, one of the songs on the album, would go on to become a Shirley favorite, even though this was the case. The record, on the other hand, did not sell very well overall. On the other hand, an intriguing event took place. The evangelical music business has a strong interest in the moniker First Lady. In a short amount of time, Shirley became known as the First Lady of Gospel Music and was introduced to audiences at concerts, on radio shows, and by gospel promoters. For her second album, From the Heart, which was published in 1978, Shirley offered Roadshow Records one more opportunity to release her music. Regrettably, the same problems that plagued her debut album with the company returned with this one as well. According to the gospel community, the music was still seen to be too secular, and the CD was not well received. When Shirley went through these events, she realized that she wanted to find a way to return to her gospel origins. She started looking for a gospel company that would be able to assist her in reaching her audience while also allowing her to maintain her authenticity as a musician. 1980 was the year when she discovered what she had been seeking with Word Records. The time that Shirley spent working for Word Records turned out to be quite productive. She went on to win several other Grammy Awards over the subsequent years, demonstrating that she had discovered her groove. During this period, she released several songs that would go on to define her style and solidify her position as a gospel music legend. These songs were among the most successful of her career. 
God's Got It All in Control, was one of these songs. It was a song that struck a chord with listeners and demonstrated Shirley's unshakable faith. Another song that stood out was Hold My Mule, which many years later would be resurrected as a Thanksgiving-related internet joke and given the name You Name It. Because of this unanticipated viral event, Shirley was able to connect with an entirely new generation of admirers. Songs such as He's Working It Out For You, Jesus I Love Calling Your Name, and You're Next In Line For A Miracle were among the other notable songs that were released during this period. Shirley worked hard to establish a reputation for herself on the evangelical music scene during the course of her solo career. She became a well-known face on a number of well-known television series, including episodes of the Bobby Jones Gospel Show, in which she made frequent guest appearances. With all of her success as a solo artist, Shirley never lost touch with her roots. Albertina Walker, her former bandmate from the Caravans, was always regarded by her as her source of inspiration and guidance. There was a time when Shirley referred to Albertina as the queen of gospel music. This was a way for her to express her admiration and thanks for the woman who had provided her with her first major break all those years ago. Shirley found herself in the heart of issues about tolerance and acceptance within the church community, even though she had a long-standing reputation as a renowned gospel performer. At the beginning of the issue, fellow gospel singer Kim Burrell made news for delivering a sermon that many people interpreted as being anti-gay. It has been claimed that Burrell used harsh language in her speech to criticize persons who identify as LGBTQ. She also used explicit and insulting terminology to describe same-sex couples and LGBTQ individuals. This speech provoked considerable indignation and criticism from a large number of people including some of Burrell's colleagues and associates in the music business. As a result of the criticism that was directed at Burrell, Shirley made the decision to offer her opinion on the subject. During a sermon that Shirley delivered at the First Baptist Church of Glen Arden in Baltimore, she made some remarks that a great number of her supporters and admirers were taken aback by. Shirley suggested that Burrell ought to have spoken his opinion sooner rather than distancing herself from the words that Burrell made or requesting greater understanding. More specifically, it was claimed that Shirley stated that Burrell ought to have made her remarks many years ago when some adjustments were made at the presidential level. Many people believed that Shirley was referring to the Supreme Court's decision in 2015 to legalize marriages between people of the same gender, even though she did not clarify the specific event to which she was referring. The statements made by Shirley appeared to connect her with the position taken by Burrell, which caught many people off guard. Shirley's statements carried a great deal of weight since she was a well-known and respected person in the field of gospel music. The fact that she appeared to be in agreement with Burrell's contentious views sparked conversations about the need of inclusiveness within the church, as well as the obligations that prominent individuals have when they speak about sensitive subjects. Shirley also provided some words of wisdom on the importance of exercising caution with one's remarks in this day and age of social media, which added yet another layer to the dispute. It has been claimed that she made the suggestion that church leaders could collect cell phones at the door in order to communicate with their audience when they wish to say anything. In response to the growing amount of criticism, Shirley realized that she needed to elaborate on her perspective. During an interview with Bishop George Bloomer, she made an effort to confront the problem head-on. Shirley highlighted that she would never purposely say anything to hurt someone and claimed that she was too elderly to be homophobic. She had indicated that she was too old to be homophobic. It is believed that Shirley has stated, in her own words, that she is aware of who she is and that she would never say anything that may harm anyone. Neda. Because she does not have the time to say something negative about someone, she emphasized that she would never even consider doing so. Shirley shared with us that she is currently in the fourth quarter of her life and that she is making every effort to be the most compassionate and well-rounded individual that she is capable of being. A further attempt was made by Shirley to provide some context for her prior remarks concerning the timing of Burrell's remarks. It was said that she questioned the reason why this matter was being brought up at this time, pondering the reasons why someone would interrupt their lives over anything of that nature. The emblem conveyed the message that whatever exists in the past ought to be left there and that all individuals, irrespective of the society in which they reside, need to go with their lives. 
Shirley closed her remarks with a heartfelt appeal for love and acceptance, regardless of one's community or membership, to bring about a reconciliation between the two groups. The Bible is said to have been quoted by her, and it is said that through love, all mankind would know that we are his disciples. It was brought to the singer's attention that Jesus did not identify whether this love was directed at the NAACP or the LGBT community. Rather, he simply stated that everyone should love him. Nevertheless, Shirley's efforts to clarify her viewpoint did not completely put an end to the issue. There were many who thought her words were evasive or contradictory, while there were others who welcomed her appeal for love and going on with life. It is interesting to note that Shirley's participation in this dispute resulted in effects that were not anticipated. Some people started spreading rumors about Shirley's personal history, implying that she could have had romantic ties with other women. Some others interpreted these charges, which were never proven to be true, as an attempt to draw attention to what was regarded to be hypocritical behavior on Shirley's part. Additionally, bigger talks regarding queerness in gospel music were initiated as a result of the uproar that surrounded Shirley's statements. At the same time, it challenged the conventional viewpoints that are prevalent within the Christian music business by drawing attention to other Christian musicians who had come out as LGBTQ. An example of this would be Trey Pearson, the main vocalist for the Christian rock band Everyday Sunday, who revealed his sexual orientation to his followers in an open letter. The decision made by Pearson sent shockwaves across the Christian music scene. The band had previously been renowned for their successful songs that were under the category of current Christian music. In a similar vein, Vicky Beeching, a prominent figure in modern Christian music and a praised songwriter, acknowledged her sexual orientation in the year 2014. Over almost a decade, Beeching had been residing in the United States, where she had been creating and producing praise music. Her songs had been sung by millions of Christians in that country. During an interview with a British publication, she came out as a lesbian, which was a momentous occasion in the world of country music since she was 35 years old. Jennifer Knapp, another well-known Christian music singer, went through something quite similar to what you did. It was a startling choice for Knapp, a young musician who had won a Dove Award and been nominated for a Grammy, to leave the country music industry all of a sudden in 2003. His debut album had sold more than 500,000 copies. Seven years later, Knapp had a new record and publicly discussed her sexual orientation, both of which brought her to the forefront of the media. Shirley's marriage to Bishop Harold Williams, which took place in June of 1983, was a momentous occasion in her personal life. As a result of their union, the pair became co-pastors of the Mount Calvary Word of Faith Church in Raleigh, North Carolina. Their union was not just a personal commitment, but also a professional one. They were responsible for the church's expansion, which resulted in the membership reaching around 1,500 members. Even though Shirley did not have any children of her own, she took great pride in her role as a stepmother to Bishop Williams' two children. The passing of Bishop Williams on July 4, 2014, has been a tragic event that occurred in 2014. Undoubtedly, Shirley went through a challenging period as a result of this loss, both in her personal life and in her capacity as a leader in the church. Nevertheless, Shirley maintained her work in both music and ministry, demonstrating the tenacity that is characteristic of her. The same year brought Shirley's musical career a turn that she had not anticipated occurrence. Her song, Teach Me Master, which was initially published on her album Get Up My Brother in 1972, was given a new lease of life when it was sampled by the Dutch producer Baker Matt. On the UK singles chart, the song that was produced, which was simply titled Teach Me, peaked at position number 22. Shirley's strong voice was introduced to a new generation of fans through her crossover into electronic dance music, which also served to highlight the enduring quality of her music. With regard to Shirley, 2016 was a year that stood out in particular. With the success of her album, Fill This House, which topped the gospel billboard list, she demonstrated that her career as a musician was not yet gone. Her accomplishments were recognized with the Rhapsody in Rhythm Award by the National Museum of African American Music in Nashville in May 2016. Shirley's ongoing influence on African American music was brought to light by this prize, which was presented months before the museum was scheduled to open its doors in 2018. 
Shirley received even another significant recognition in June of 2016, when the Hollywood Chamber of Commerce bestowed upon her a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. In recent years, Shirley has been confronted with a number of peculiar problems. Despite the fact that she has received honors and continues to be active in the fields of music and ministry. Surprisingly, there have been many instances in which reports on her passing have been spread. In one incident, a video made a false allegation that a photograph of a black lady who was hospitalized and had a breathing tube was of Shirley in her dying moments. Concern and uncertainty were aroused among her followers as a result of these erroneous rumors. As recently as January 2024, the rumors and speculations over Shirley's health and the belief that she had passed away reappeared. It was discovered that another film had been uploaded to the internet, which presented a narrative of her life and work under the erroneous premise that she had disappeared. In order to address the repeated false rumors that were being spread, Shirley decided to take matters into her own hands. She decided to openly confront the rumors by recording a video on the spur of the moment. Shirley, while seated at a table, addressed her followers openly and honestly, expressing both laughter and displeasure with the situation. She recognized the myth that she had been buried after being declared dead, but she joked that she had no awareness of the rumor unless she was a live dead person. After that, Shirley went on to address other specific health-related allegations, such as the assertions that she had been admitted to the hospital with acute throat cancer. The fact that she had never suffered from a major illness in her whole life was what she referred to as a blessing, and she emphasized this with the unique wit and elegance that she had. She expressed her gratitude to those who are supporting her for their love and prayers, and she requested assistance in disseminating the news that she was, in fact, still alive and doing well, to the glory and praise of God. Shirley has persisted in her efforts in the fields of music and community service despite the difficulties she has encountered. She continues to host her annual Outreach Ministries Conference, which is an event that exemplifies her dedication to assisting others who are facing difficulties. Shirley can offer children food, clothes, housing, and toys through this outreach program. Additionally, she can provide financial support to individuals who are experiencing difficulties. Shirley launched a business that bears her name, which is an entrepreneurial decision that is in line with her strong commitment to charitable giving. Her kind personality is shown in the fact that she uses the money she makes from this business endeavor to assist other people, particularly during the Christmas season. Shirley has indicated that she is interested in broadening her views even further when she is questioned about her prospective goals for the future. Shirley Caesar is not only famous for her music career, but also shows her desire to expand her artistic range through acting. Throughout her career, Shirley has had the opportunity to appear in several films and television shows. She has appeared in films such as The Apostle and television shows, where she has not only shown her musical talent, but also her acting ability. Shirley believes that acting is also a powerful form of communication, similar to music. She believes that acting can help her express more deeply the stories and messages she wants to convey to her fans. What do you think about Shirley Caesar's unique perspectives and views? Please share your thoughts in the comments section below. We would love to hear from you. And don't forget to like the video and subscribe to the channel for more interesting updates. Thank you and see you in the next videos.